Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pinion. I'm bringing you today's word for November 24th, 2015. I'm excited about this message. It's a, it's a teaching message and there's a lot of nuggets, uh, several nuggets in this message that could really, if you receive them and process them, could be information that could change your life, right? And so as I'm sharing it with you, it's information that you must receive in your spirit. And you know what I mean as I go through the message. So in yesterday's message, we went back to Matthew chapter 16, verses 23 to, to 33. And in that passage, we were really dealing with um, how Jesus tested his disciples, right? So uh, Jesus told his disciples, well, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they answered him, well, some say, you know, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said, well, who do you say that I am? He was like, you know, that's how they think, the world thinks. These people that don't know me, they think that way. But how do you think? And really, he was trying to test their mind. He wanted to know how they were thinking. And that's very important because as believers, we'll learn today that your mind is the control center of your life. So remember, you the three parts of you, right? Just like there's three parts of God. God is Father, Son, Spirit. He's a tripartite being. You are a tripartite being. You are spirit, soul, and body. So you are a spirit. You possess a soul. And your spirit and your soul live in this body for now. This is how you relate to this world. We dealt with that yesterday. So today we're going to continue to flow in that same vein. And so if I'm a spirit, soul, and body, then the, the soul is in the middle. And in your soul, you have your mind, your emotions, and your will. And I'm going to really be just kind of deal with your mind. The way that you think and how your mind, the way that you think, becomes the control center for your life. So what does this mean to you today? We have nine things to share with you today, and so let's get into them. Number one, so spirit, soul, body, right? There's three parts of you, and, and uh, here is, is your mind. Your mind's in the middle. So here we go. God is a spirit. Now, we've dealt with that already, right? And so God is a spirit, and he communicates with you spirit to spirit. So he's a spirit. He communicates with you through the Holy Spirit. So his spirit, the Bible says, bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God. So when we're born again, his spirit comes in and connects with our spirit. So he communicates with us spirit to spirit. That's how God communicates with us. Now on this side, we have a body. And so the body communicates with this world. Number two, the world is sensual, not spiritual. And the world communicates with us through our body and its senses. So God is spiritual, communicates with us spirit to spirit. The world is sensual, communicates with us through our senses. So we have spirit, we have senses. Number three, now your mind sits in the center and your, the, your mind is now the control center of your life. It is in your mind that you either choose to be influenced by your spirit, which is being influenced by God through the Holy Spirit, or by your body, which is receiving information through his senses. That's how you're, you're communicating with this world. So you can either be influenced by God's world, which comes in through spiritual information, through your spirit, or through this world, which is information and is coming to you through your body, through your senses. Your mind is in the center and your mind is the control center. Your mind then has to decide, who am I going to be influenced by? Am I going to be influenced by spirit or by senses, right? Number four, your mind is already programmed. When I came to God, I was 23. I already thought a certain way. So your mind right now, it's already programmed. And if you want to change, right, if you're not happy with your life and maybe you're making too many sensual decisions and not enough spirit, spiritual decisions and your mind, you know, you want to change. Well, in order to change, because your mind is already programmed, in order to change, you have to be deprogrammed and then reprogrammed. So you have to learn a whole new way of thinking to think like God, to accept the things of God, to quickly accept the things of God and not the things of this world, right? Number five, every day, both God on this side and this world on this side are attempting to influence you. God's influence is coming to your mind through your spirit and the world's influence is coming to your mind through your senses and your mind then, the control center, has to decide. Who's it gonna be influenced by? It will decide either this way or this way every day. You get to decide. You choose, but you, you are choosing in your mind. Number six, the influence you receive through your senses, right, is often easy to receive for your mind because you'll say it makes sense, right? It makes sense because it's coming through your senses. 
is something you can validate through your natural senses. And because you can see it, touch it, taste it, smell it, then you can validate it with sense realm evidence is often easy to receive. The challenge is that the influence you get from God is not coming through your senses. So he will tell you something in your spirit that you can't validate with sense realm evidence. And oftentimes he will even say something to you that's beyond the limits of this world. So he'll tell you to do something that you don't have the money to do. He'll tell you to go to speak to somebody that you don't know. He will tell you to uh, uh, to, to go attempt something that's humanly impossible. So he will tell you to do something that that you cannot validate with your senses that, that has no sense realm evidence, therefore it requires faith. And whatever he tells you to do, oftentimes it makes no sense. It won't make sense because it didn't come through your senses. It came through your spirit. And then your mind, the control center has to decide, who am I going to listen to? Am I going to go this way? It make no sense. Or am I going to go this way, which makes sense. And I'm kind of, you know, I like doing that because it's easy and I can validate it with my senses. So, it, you know, that's where you have to decide. Your mind is a control center. And you got to get to the point where you easily decide this way, God, instead of this way, the world. Number seven, when Jesus told his disciples that he was going to have to die, and that's okay, though, because he was going to be raised from the dead three days later. Man, that, is, that don't make no sense. That did not make any sense at all, right? You cannot validate resurrection with central evidence. You can't validate that with your senses. So that made no sense. And so it was not logical. It was illogical. It was impossible. It was unreasonable. Therefore, they rejected it. Peter spoke out against it. He got rebuked for it. But Jesus was living by the spirit, not by this world, not by the senses of this world. Number eight, you must condition your mind. This, this is very important. You must condition your mind. That's why messages like this are important. Opening your Bible every day is important. Don't just open your Bible on Sundays. You got to get into the word every day. That's why you got to get a steady diet of the word of God. You must condition your mind to routinely accept the things of God, even when they don't make sense. Number nine, and finally, you know your mind is renewed, right? Because the goal is to get your mind renewed. Romans 12, one and two. You know your mind is renewed when the impossible, the supernatural, the unreasonable, the illogical, when all of that seems logical to you, right? Things that don't make sense in this world, when, when those things seem logical to you, then you know your mind is renewed. Like, for example, I've, I've used this before. When somebody says, oh, man, Rick, such and such, we was in the service, and uh, there was a, a person that was in a walker, and they couldn't walk, and they, they was in a walker for 10 years, and then they got up and they started walking. Now, that, that doesn't make sense, right? But to me, that's logical. Why? Because my mind is already renewed to accept it. Oh, there was a person in the service, and... Um, in the presence of God, and they had an accident 20 years ago, and they can't hear out their left ear, and all of a sudden, pop, they heard a pop in their left ear, and now they can hear, and they went to the doctor, and the doctor checked it out, and they have a brand new eardrum, right? Well, that doesn't make sense in this world, but that makes sense to me. That, that I mean, it seems logical to me. Why? Because my mind is renewed to accept the things of God, because I'm conditioned to believe God. I'm conditioned to think like God thinks. And that's the way you want to be because when you get there and your mind is controlling your life, so now when you get there and you start thinking like God, when you get there, you will quickly accept the things of God, think like God, speak like God, live like God. You will become an extension of God in this world and he will be able to use you for his glory. So let's close this out with a declaration of faith. Repeat after me in faith from a believing heart. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your grace. And also my requirement to live by faith. I am a spirit. I possess a soul. And my spirit and my soul live in my body. For now, my body relates to this world through my senses. My spirit relates to your world, Father, through, my, through the Holy Spirit. And my mind gets to decide which influence I will accept. My mind is the control center of my life. By faith, I declare that I am influenced by your spirit. I refuse to live my life as a mere human. You did not call me to live my life based on senses alone. I appreciate the information that comes in through my senses. And I take that information in and I make informed decisions. However, I live by faith. This means I live by revelation. 
the revelation I received through my spirit. I accept what you say, even when it makes no sense at all. And I believe it by faith. Your kingdom has come. Your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven through me because I think like you. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Sign up. Get the messages that will be a blessing to you as you head into this day. Just remember, your mind is the control center of your life. And if you get your mind renewed to think like God, you will experience an amazing life by God's amazing grace. God bless you.